many KOs. And he says his power is improving. Tony Valdez felt his combinations in hand speed. And as he grows out of the featherweight division, which could happen in six months, he'll bring this power with him. But he'll need that power to win the NABF featherweight title tonight. Because standing in his way is the veteran former champion, 27-year-old Stevie Cruz. Stevie was himself only 22 when he stunned champion Barry McGuigan and the boxing world by winning the WBA crown. Three 15th round knockdowns cemented his win. In. He would lose that title, but remain a top featherweight contender with wins like this one over Tracy Harris Patterson. Is he still the fighter he was then? Cruz says the answer is yes, and he'll show us tonight. And with it, the keys to victory, Al. Well, Ferrellis can't be lazy with his jab because nobody punches quicker with a counter right than, than Cruz. Pace your attack. Don't blow it all out in the first four rounds. For Cruz, he's got a counter well, and when they say let his hands go, sometimes Stevie Cruz has a tendency to not punch enough in matches. That will hurt him tonight. It's going to be interesting to see just how this fight does develop. Let's meet him now with Michael Buffer. Michael? Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is sanctioned by the North American Boxing Association. Supervisor at ringside is Sammy Macias, and it is approved and sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. The chairman, Dr. James Dave, commissioners, Dr. Elias Ghanem, Luther Mack, Bruce Lane, and Nat Karasali, executive director, Chuck Minker. The three judges assigned to this bout are Dalby Shirley, Al Munoz, and Billy Graham. Physicians at ringside, Dr. James Wishgame, and Dr. William Berliner. The timekeepers, Mike Lasella and Jane Broadfoot. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Sands Hotel and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble to 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant NABF featherweight championship. The referee for this bout is Toby Gibson. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the light green trunks and weighs an even 125 pounds from Fort Worth, Texas. His professional record, an excellent one, 35 victories, 19 by KO, only five defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, the former WBA featherweight champion of the world, Stevie Cruz. out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks and also weighing an even 125 pounds. This native of Mexico is now fighting for the Ten Goose organization in Van Nuys, California. His professional record, 24 and 0, 20 by KO. He currently holds the state title in California in this division. Ladies and gentlemen, Rafael Ruela. Okay, gentlemen, I'll give you both your instructions in the respective dressing rooms with the NABF supervisor. Are there any questions? Give me a good, clean fight and obey my commands at all times. Good luck. Rafael Reles taking that quantum leap upwards to face a former champion and a guy who still feels he can be champion. The one thing about this fight, I think, Al, Stevie Cruz is not a guy who just once was. He still wants to be. Absolutely, and 27 is not ancient, even though, yes, he's been through a lot of wars and a lot of tough bouts. This is really one of our most, I think, competitive and significant bouts in recent months. And I think it will be interesting to see how Stevie Cruz decides to fight him. As you look at the knockout ratio, Rulas, of course, Rulas, rather, who has not fought the caliber competition Stevie Cruz has with an 83% knockout record. Yes, Cruz, nice combination by Cruz, drove Rulas into the corner. If Cruz decides to swarm Rellis, it'll be interesting to see how Rellis performs. Now, the Goosens feel Rellis is a tough fighter in close, despite the fact that he's got long arms. That, that, that is true, and he has a lot of mental toughness as well. There's no question, Stevie Cruz, that little burst, which is uncharacteristic of him early in about, was designed to test Rafael Rellis. He wanted to see what's this guy have. And I'll tell you what, he and David Gorman, uh, as they told us this morning, were not that impressed with, with uh, Rock, uh, Rellis. They didn't think he was that good. Now, they may find out differently, but uh, they, they said he doesn't have that much. We'll beat him easily. Strong words. Very strong words. And from people who don't often give you that kind of stuff, there's not a lot of bravado with those guys. Precisely. From either Stevie Cruz or Dave Gorman. We'll see if they, that, that confidence is well founded. <laughs> Rellis is a guy, so far in his career, that can get you out of there with one punch. He 
has a, a, a good left hand, a good left hand, but sometimes he throws it so wide, it may offer an option for uh, Cruz to come inside it with that good straight right hand. See, look how wide that left can come. And you saw Cruz throw the right hand. He missed with it, but it could be an indication of things to come. And I'll tell you what else, Ra Raphael's throwing that left very slow. That one got there. He's not throwing it as quickly as I have seen him do it. But there's the jab, and there's the right behind him. That was a good fight. From the outside, there is no question, Rella should handle this fight. Yeah, and right now, Cruz is content to fight him outside. Nice combination by Rellis and another good left hand. Drove Cruz into the ropes. This is not new for Stevie Cruz. He's had tough early rounds in bouts before and come back. So while Raphael Rellis is doing extremely well here in round one and should get the credit for it, you don't want to be sitting there counting Cruz out of this bout. But Raphael is getting there with that run from him, and that's why he's getting back in it, because you pull back, you stay real close, okay? Okay? You stay? You stay close, stay close. Don't look, don't jump back. Stay close. That way you can start working on the bringing back to the Words to the wise, stay close, and here's why they're saying that. Good straight right hand, right on the chin by Rellis. And see, he continues to punch, always finishes off those combinations. And working to the body as well. See this left hand and right underneath by Rellis. And the advice, as you heard in the corner, stay close. Dave Gorman leaning over the ropes. Meanwhile, in the corner of Rafael Rellis. That's Joe Goose, Greg Goose, on the outside of the ropes. Let's go, get out brother Dan in the suit in the audience. He's the manager. That's right. He's got his manager's suit on tonight, That's too, right. doesn't he? There is, um, there were a couple of little mini dramas in that first round. First, Cruz trying to test Rellis early, wanting him, not wanting, and then Rellis, oh my! Tremendous combination, spotted off with the right hand. I think that was the one that set him up. Five! Does not appear to be greatly hurt. I think it was a delayed effect to the right hand, despite the fact it's a three or four punch combination. Well, they're finding out, Stevie Cruz, that Raphael Rellis is a tough competitor and does have skills. And a oh. right hand by Cruz. They say no knockdown, but it was mighty close. I thought it was a knockdown, and I thought Cruz hit him when he was down also. I think that was a knockdown. And that's why you can't get careless against Cruz. That sneak right hand can knock anybody in his division down. Anybody. A lot of bombs being thrown early in this fight. And remember, he had Jorge Paez hurt. Neither man seems hurt now. The left hand by Rose. left hook more than his right hand. He's in a hooking contest with Rellis. That isn't going to get it done for him. Well, Rellis really popping that right hand. What will get it done for Cruz is what scored what I believe was a flash knockdown, and that's the right hand. But look how Rellis, obviously not hurt when he was hit with that right hand too badly because he is right on the attack. And that right hand is just getting there at will, and he's got Cruz in trouble. Cruz fighting back on the instinct, hold the, hold the but certainly hurt. That they will call a knockdown. And again, it was a cumulative knockdown. But there's still a long way to go. There's no free knockdown rule in this bout. So he's been knocked down twice, but there is no mandatory three knockdown rule. Cruz is hurt, no question about it. See if Rellis jumps on him, doesn't try to get him out of there. And Rellis doing a great job of keeping his distance, not being in position to get countered. Keeping his distance and keeping his cool. Yes. But Rellis, for a guy who is sort of lean, is a heavy-handed puncher. He hits very hard, especially with the straight right hand. And Stevie Cruz finding that out. Cruz has been in with the best in his division. That uppercut was a little short, but not the right hand. And down goes Cruz.
used again for a third time. No three knockdown rules, so the fight will go on. But what a round for Rafael Reles. Tubby Gibson wisely will let it go. Huge round for Reles. You can make a case for a 10-7 round here. Yes, you certainly could. many times he was knocked down. It was three. This will be the first one. Good left uppercut by Rellis. And then the next one will come really from a, a group of punches. I don't even know if there's one specific one. We'll see. But mostly him whacking away to the body and the head. Not a specific punch there. Body shots may have done the damage. And then this next knockdown, definitely a series of punches. The right hurt him, and then again the body shot, and there goes Stevie Cruz down. Had there been a three knockdown rule, of course, this bout would have been ended. But Stevie Cruz in a whole heap of trouble here as we start the third round. And right inside's where he wants to be, and that's why there he can plant punches like that left hook. Look at the numbers wow, in the right second right. round, huge for Relis, plus yeah. the three knockdowns. And of those 51, so many were powerful shots. It's very simple for Stevie Cruz. He's got to see if he can get inside that jab and work on the inside where he can throw those short punches. Yeah, that's the thing I was going to say. If we look at your scorecard, the lopsided both 10-8 rounds. Like, I assume well, what you give 10-7 I in made that a 10-7 in a second. I took your advice, Terry. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. The fact is, and we mentioned this early in the fight, Cruz is fighting Relis's fight. And again, huge combinations, and down goes Cruz. That is a career maker. Some wondered about this young man. He had not fought top competition yet. He had won some big matches. Some wondered, was he able to beat a world-class competitor? And boy, he answered that question decisively tonight. Okay. Because even though Stevie Cruz might not be what he was back in the days when he beat McWigan and had a war with Asparagosa, still is a decent boxer. And right, this was, was a huge one. And Stevie Cruz simply did not want to. I'm not saying he quit, but he had taken a horrendous beating and is just now getting up. Yeah, he showed a lot of heart to, to get up after those three knockdowns, and this one was just too much. And this young man, 19 years old, 19 years old, when people are just starting their boxing career, he is at a plateau, winning an NABF title tonight, and certainly on the verge of a, a world title shot. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of people avoiding him, I would think. Let's get the official word now from Michael Buffer. Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Toby Gibson reaches the count of 10 at 57 seconds of the third round. The winner by knockout victory, he now has the NABF featherweight championship from Van Nuys, California, Rafael Ruela. Well, a most impressive win for Rafael Reles. He is the NABF champion, but as you mentioned at the very beginning of the show, that is strictly a stepping stone for this young man, who at 19 years old with 25 fights still has a very, very big future in front of him. For real tonight, he's with Al Bernstein. Well, thank you, Barry. Rafael, this was a performance that I would think had to even go beyond your expectations. First, I want to find out what you were thinking. He came out to test you in that first round, pushed you right in the corner. Were you surprised? Well, no, I tell you, I wasn't surprised. I figured that he, you know, he thought that with his experience and everything, he had been around with the, you know, great opponents, you know, like ex he had been in there with world champions. Yeah. He figured he'd go out there and, and try to get my heart you know, away from the fight, from the beginning of the fight. All right, well, he couldn't do that. You knocked him down three times, and then finally, here is where you ended things. We, did you know he was in this much trouble? Yeah, I, I saw that he was, you know, I knew that it was all a matter of a couple more shots, you know. They were being, you know, I was placing them real well, so I felt when I was catching him with them. Yet another angle, we'll look at it. You you kept your composure very well when you heard him. You stayed on the outside and didn't get lured into a match on the inside with him. No, I didn't want to because I knew the guy could hit. I mean, I saw him fight against Pius and you drop Pius, so, you know, that was to show that a guy can hit. One of the well, few guys that I've seen, you know, knock down Pius. 
He certainly can. And there were a couple of spots in the spot. And we're going to see it right here where he did nail you with a couple of shots. There's a good right hand, but this was ruled a slip. Was it a slip? Well, I'll tell you, he got me. I don't me, know, Ralph. Yeah, he, he got me good, but, you know, it was just a stun, like a flash yeah. thing. See, I, it probably should have been called a knockdown, but you were not hurt at that point. No, I wasn't hurt at all. Like I said, it was a flash thing, you know, just right quick, and lights on and come yeah. back on. And you came back very quickly. Let's ask your trainer, Joe Goosen, though I can't imagine the report card would be anything but an A. Uh, it's a tremendous performance. Well, he's got a lot to learn. we got to go back to the drawing board. <laughs> uh, you know, Al... I, When's he going to turn into a real boxer? That's the question. You know, we figured all the way. You don't want to be braggadocio. You don't want to brag. You don't, but I knew going into this fight just what he's been doing to his sparring partners. Uh, the guys that we... We had this kid that fought, Louis Espinosa, uh, uh, Ulysses Chong, who said he's never been hit as hard before in his life as this kid, and he goes, uh, hopefully he'll move up to 130. So uh, I, the the whole report, and Steve Cruz said he's never been hit like this before in his life. So I, I knew going in, but you, you want to hold your tongue until afterwards, but this kid is a world champion now, period. All right, Joe, thank you very much, and th congratulations, Raphael. Raphael Rillas with a performance tonight that could only be called stunning. Not